Hello, this is Andrew Klein, and this is part two of modeling a skeleton. In this video tutorial, we'll take a look at modeling the spine. Uh, I've previously modeled a single vertebrae in the first part of this series. Uh, I'm going to use a process called duplicate along curve to create the rest of the spine. Uh, here's an image of the spine that I'll be trying to create. Uh, I've got one vertebrae down at the bottom, one of the lumbar vertebrae. Uh, first step, I'm actually going to create a EP curve. Uh, I'll get the uh, Create EP Curve tool, and I'm going to click several times, cre uh, creating essentially vertices as I go up the spine, uh, creating the curvature for the spine. Uh, this will allow me to uh, essentially place the curve and allow me to duplicate this vertebrae along the curve. So next step, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go into the animation menu set, select the vertebrae, then the curve, uh, and say uh, attach to motion path. And I'll go to the options box for this. Um, now using the default options, when I hit apply, uh, you'll notice two problems here. The vertebrae goes up the curve, but one, it's at the wrong angle, and two, it's doing this weird flip. And we need to actually figure out how to get control over this. Uh, first off, we can fix the weird angle problem. Uh, that's going to come by resetting the up vector and the forward vector. Since my vertebrae is pointing up and it's going to be duplicated up this chain, I want my forward vector to be in the y axis. Uh, I'll then set my um, up vector to the z axis. You'll notice now it's not um, oriented wrong, but it is still doing this weird flip. Uh, now this flip is something of a well-known problem inside of Maya with motion paths, and there is a way to control this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the curve itself, and I'm going to offset this curve. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go into the Surfaces menu and select the curve. Underneath Edit Curves, I'm going to go to Offset, uh, an offset curve here. Uh, I'm going to turn off the loop splitting option just to make sure the curve doesn't break. And when I offset this, you'll notice a second curve appears. Uh, this curve is essentially a guide rail that I'm going to use to make sure that my vertebrae stays oriented in the correct uh, location. I'm going to create a locator under uh, Create Locator. And I'm going to position this locator at the start of the guide curve. Uh, again, this is going to be like a second rail. Uh, for this piece as it goes up and it's going to make sure that it's oriented correctly. This locator essentially is going to uh, constrain the vertebrae as it moves up the curve and again we're using the curve to create duplication along it quickly. Uh, I'm going to select the locator and uh, I'm going to actually set this along the motion path for the new curve. So uh, I'll do attach to motion uh, path, and I'm just going to reset this to the default options. And there we go. And now you'll notice as I scrub through the timeline here that my locator is following the guide curve. So you can see here I'll go very slowly. The locator following the guide curve. Well, next up, I'm going to put the uh, vertebrae along the first curve, uh, attaching that to the uh, motion path. Uh, before I do that, I want to make sure that I name this guide curve, and I'm going to name it Helper, just so I know very specifically what it's called. Uh, actually, sorry, I'm going to name the locator, not the guide curve. Uh, I'm going to lo uh, name the locator Helper, uh, and uh, when I attach the vertebrae to the new motion path, uh, I'm going to switch my settings here. Uh, and uh, just so you can see in detail here, I'm going to reset my uh, vector from vector. I'm going to go to object up and I'm going to make sure that I'm using the helper to control this. Here you can see what I've set exactly. My world up type went from vector to object up and my world up object is set to helper. Now when I attach this, the helper locator is going to allow my vertebrae to not flip as it goes up along the curve. Now you'll notice if you use the um, object move as you're trying to move this, vertebrae itself isn't going to uh, respond to that, but if you edit the 
uh, components, such as the vertices, you can actually reconfigure this as you go. Now here's the really cool part. As I go up the curve itself, I can actually duplicate this piece. And notice my timeline is about 200 frames long. That allows me to have many, many frames here that this uh, vertebrae can move along. So I get very smooth interpolation along it. Uh, I'm going to um, be able to move this up the curve. And as I go, if I duplicate, as this moves up, I'm essentially making duplicates along this curve itself. So here I'm doing uh, Control D for duplicate. Uh, and as I keep going, I can edit each of these duplicates. Um, so I move it up to its new spot uh, by scrubbing the timeline. Uh, then I can edit the components. Remember, you can't edit this in object mode. Uh, object mode will just kind of snap back. But I can edit the components kind of get this into uh, the spot which kind of works best for this new vertebrae. And once I have it working the way I want from both the side and front and back angles that I'm using, um, what I can do is uh, again scrub the timeline which will allow the vertebrae to move up the primary motion path, the primary curve. Uh, and again, it's being helped out by that locator. So I'll scrub the timeline, moving this up to the new spot. It's rotating everything in place for me. Uh, and now I can just edit this vertebrae so that it uh, has its sort of correct new shape as these vertebrae change from position to position, working its way from the lumbar to the thoracic and up to the cervical vertebrae. So as I come to the conclusion here, uh, I'm just making some more minor edits in some of these points uh, following my image planes. Uh, and I can continue with this technique uh, till I get essentially the entirety of the spine. And uh, with a couple more of these duplicates, again, I will have the entire spine. And uh, by using this technique, and maybe by using some individual changes and duplications, or uh, a lattice as well as I did at the end of this, um, I can create um, many duplicates very quickly. And when I'm done, uh, I'll just go in and I'll delete all my history, um, and I will then remove all of those curves and locators, and uh, my spine will essentially be complete. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on uh, creating a spine from a single vertebrae using duplicate along curve uh, and showing you some of the ways you can control duplicate along curve so you don't get weird orientation and flipping problems. Uh, this has been Andrew Klein. Stay tuned for part three, which will look at building a rib cage. Thank you very much.